and everybody say, I am rich. And everybody goes, I am rich. You know what happens next? Everyone starts laughing. And I go, what are you laughing at? And I go, well, I'm not rich. And I say, but you just said you were. And they go, yeah, but I don't believe it. See, isn't that the problem with that old method, right? With the mm -hmm. old way of doing it. We say these positive statements. We want to believe it, but we just don't believe it most of the time. I'm just so glad that all of you are here today because I... We've got a great guest, and I'm just delighted to welcome Noah St. John. He is the author of Get Rid of Your Head Trash About Money, which I love that concept. Um, he's also known as the father of affirmations, not affirmations, but affirmations, and the mental health coach to the stars. So he's worked with Hollywood celebrities, eight-figure company CEOs, and professional athletes. And he's ultimately famous for helping entrepreneurs make more in just 12 weeks than they made in the last 12 months while winning their lives back, which is so important because it's not enough to be successful in one area of your life. It really is nice to be having everything going in, in harmony, I like to say. So I am going to be bringing on Dr. Noah St. John to the show. So welcome. Welcome to the program. I'm so glad to have you here. Thanks, Gloria. Great to be here. Well, I, I love asking our guests a little bit about their background and and. The one thing that when we connected at uh, a publicity summit a, a while ago, and yep. when you mentioned that you were the father of affirmations, which is different from affirmations, which people may um, have heard about before I was intrigued and wondering what is the difference. So how did you become known as that? And what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll answer that in two parts, if I may. So yeah. I, I'll i give you the quick story of how I became the father of affirmations. So I grew up poor in a rich neighborhood. And I know that's a total cliche, but it's totally true. I grew up in a little town called Kennebunkport, Maine, which is mm. one of the wealthiest communities in New England. But my family was dirt poor. And I mean that literally because we lived at the bottom of a dirt road in a drafty, unfinished home that my parents ended up losing the foreclosure when I was just 15 years old. So from a very young age, I was painfully exposed to the gap, the chasm between the haves and the have nots. The haves was everyone else in the community and the have nots was my family. Now, you hear these motivational speakers, they get on stage and we've all heard them. You know, and they say, well, we were poor, but we were happy. We didn't know we were poor. Well, in my family, we freaking knew we were poor uh, because my mother, bless her heart, reminded us every day that we were poor and miserable. So no, it wasn't happy. It sucked. And so I hated that life of poverty. I hated being poor because I saw that right down the street, there's great wealth and abundance. So literally from the time I was a young kid, I said, how the heck do I get from here to there? And, you know, of course, there was no one who could answer that question. Uh, this was long before the internet or anything like that. So I did the only thing I could think of to do, which is I went to the library and started reading every book. I read every book that I could on personal growth and self-help, all the classics, Dale Carnegie, Napoleon Hill, Stephen Covey. I read every book that I could and I just, I really tried to apply them. I tried to work hard to be more successful. The problem was it, it, I couldn't get it to work. And so at the age of 25, I decided to commit suicide because I was so frustrated and depressed and lonely and broke. And at the very last minute, my life was spared but I didn't know why. And so I went on a, another long journey to find what is my purpose here on the earth? Why am I still here? And it wasn't until five years after that experience that I actually had the discovery that led to me becoming the father of that formation. So you can see it was a, a long and winding road that actually uh, caused me to end up where, you know, I am today. And, uh, you know, all these years later, we've, we've helped our clients in over 120 countries to uh, you know, add over $2 billion in found revenues as a result of uh, using my methods. So uh, I wanted to give you that first, and then, you know, we could talk about uh, my affirmations method. Yeah, let's, let's, let's just dive into that now. Let's talk about that first. And then, then we're going to, I definitely want to ask you a little bit more. about. Absolutely. Okay. So everybody <laughs> listening to this program knows what an affirmation is, right? An affirmation is what the gurus have been teaching for decades, right? And, um, you know, like, as an executive coach, a business coach, I'm also a keynote speaker. So I get to speak at conferences and events all around the country and around the world. And one of the things I like to do uh, at my keynote speeches, I like to ask everybody in the audience, I say, 
okay, everybody, we're going to play a game and everybody say an affirmation, just like those guys taught us. And everybody say, I am rich. And everybody goes, I am rich. You know what happens next? Everyone starts laughing. And I go, what are you laughing at? And I go, well, I'm not rich. And I say, but you just said you were. And they go, yeah, but I don't believe it. See, isn't that the problem with that old method, right? With the mm -hmm. old way of doing it, right? Uh, we say these positive statements. We want to believe it, but we just don't believe it most of the time. Mm -hmm. In fact, did you know that a study was actually done on this very topic? And it actually showed scientifically that uh, the old way, the old affirmations way only works for 25% of the people. It only works 25% of the time. So imagine if you had a smartphone that only worked one out of four times. Yeah. You'd probably right. trade it in for a better phone, wouldn't you? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's what I did. I invented a better phone, right? A better way of using your brain. And so um, this was actually uh, April 20th, 1997. And I was in the shower. And, and in fact, in my books and my programs, I call it the shower that changed everything. Because I literally had these uh, that aha moment in the shower, which probably everybody listening has just had that, right? You have those mm -hmm. aha moments. Well, this was the shower that changed everything for me and now for over a million people around the world who use my affirmations method. So I was thinking about this very topic. How come I've been using these affirmations? You know, I read all those books. They all say the same thing. How come I've been doing exactly what they said and it's not working, right? Because I had all these statements, you know, just like they tell you. You know, I'm happy, I'm rich, I'm successful. And the reality was, no, I'm not. I'm broke, unhappy, and miserable, right? So what the heck is going on here? So I started to think about, well, what are we really talking about? We're talking about beliefs. But what's a belief? Well, a belief is just a thought. And then I said, well, what is human thought? And I realized that human thought is the process of asking and searching for answers to questions, not statements, but questions. In fact, I can prove this to you. I can prove it to everyone watching the program. All right, now, if I ask you a question, I want you to see what happens. Why is the sky blue? Why is the sky blue? Now, what just happened in your brain? Your brain started to search for the answer, right? Right, yes. <laughs> and notice it did it without even thinking. It, you, it happened automatically. Without your vo own volition, you, you automatically, your brain automatically started to search for the answer. So I said, wait a second. If, you're, if the human mind is automatically searching for answers to questions, why are we going around making statements we don't believe? Why don't we just cut out the middleman? And I said, well, what would that look like? Well, let's see. You got the statement or affirmation. For example, I am rich, to which your brain goes, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. We don't believe it. Mm -hmm. And so I said, if that's the statement, then what would the question be? And then I said, why am I so rich? Why am I so rich? Ooh. Now, when you ask that question, what immediately starts to happen in your brain? It looks for answers. That's right? right. You start to search for the answer. In fact, psychologists call this the embedded presupposition factor of the brain. That's just a fancy way of saying when you ask a question, your brain searches for the answer. Right. And so what we're talking about, what I talk about in my books and my coaching and my, my speaking, my teaching programs is the law of sowing and reaping. As you sow, so shall you reap. Now, this is an ancient law. It's been taught for centuries. However, what are we sowing? We're sowing seeds of thought. And yet, what are most people doing? Sowing lousy thought seeds. Mm -hmm. Why am I so stupid? Why am I so fat? Why can't I lose weight? Why isn't my business growing? Why can't I get more patients or customers or clients? Why is there more month left at the end of the money? Right. Right. And when you ask lousy questions, what do you get? <coughs> lousy answers. Lousy that's answers, sure. right? And that creates yeah. a lousy life. So yeah. I said, wait a second. What if instead of asking lousy questions that lead to lousy answers, create a lousy life? What if we just flip the whole thing on its head, start asking empowering questions that lead to phenomenal answers and create a wonderful life? And as I was standing there in the shower, April 1997, I said, holy cow, I think I just invented something. And so I had to give it a name. And the name that I gave it was Affirmations. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like uh, for those of you watching the program here. So it's Affirmations. This is one of my uh, 18 books. This is my book from Hay House called The Book of Affirmations. So it's A-F-F-O-R. M-A-T-I-O-N-S. And you go to affirmations.com and learn more about this. But anyway, that's how Affirmations was born. And that's how I became the father of Affirmations. By the way, uh, did you... Okay, so people ask me, one of the questions I get all the time is, well, Noah, where'd the word Affirmations come from? How did you invent that word? And so uh, the word affirmation, right? The one that we're all used mm -hmm. to, the one that the gurus have been teaching for decades, that word comes from the Latin word, Firmare, which means to make firm. 
Now, the mm -hmm. word affirmations that I invented, and by the way, it's perfectly legitimate to invent a new word mm -hmm. when you have a new way of looking at the universe or new technology. Isn't it true? We need a new word to describe it. For right. example, computer, yeah. software, internet, <laughs> Google, yeah. Facebook. These are all new words in terms of human history. They've only been around a very, very short amount of time. Of course, now we use it every day, but it's a new technology. We need a new word. Well, what I'm teaching, what I've been teaching for the last quarter century is a new technology of the mind. Mm. So our formations comes from the Latin word formare, which means to form mm. or give shape to. So what I often ask my coaching clients or my audience members at my you know keynote speeches is, what if you're making something firm? but it's in the wrong form. Mm. That means you formed the life you didn't even want. Right. And so mm. therefore now using my affirmations method for the first time in human history, we humans can take conscious control of the questions we're asking, change the questions, change our habits, change our results, and that's how we change our lives. Mm. Wow. Mind blown. Yeah. <laughs> <Today>. <laughs> it's powerful. It, it it's really simple is. though. It's so simple. Yeah. And the number one thing that people say to me is, I can't believe no one thought of that before. And I'm like, I know me. That's what I said. <laughs> when, I, when I invented, discovered this 25 years ago, I said, oh my God, that's the coolest thing I ever heard. Yeah. I mean, I heard it in my brain and I'm like, that is amazing. And so I, you know, I had to write a book about it. Now I've written 18 of books about it. So it's pretty awesome. That's awesome. Um, well, okay. So let's, let's, let's actually, let me ask you one example, mm -hmm. just if you could, if you can share. So what sure. would be an example of an affirmation? Let's say if someone does want to be able to, uh, you know, let's say get more clients in their business. Right. And so, and so what would be a better quite, and are they actually, I'm going to back up. Yep. Are they, are these always questions or is it, or can you come up with a statement? So which, what are the affirmations? <laughs> yes. what is okay. like so the format of it? <laughs> this is great. This comes up all the time and I'm, I'm happy. I love answering these questions. Okay. Cause this is my affirmations method is by far the most popular thing that, that I teach that I do over the last 25 years. I mean, it's the number one thing that people <laughs> ask me about that people find me, you know, on YouTube or on podcasts, they say, Oh my gosh, Noah, your affirmations method changed my life. Now that's just one thing of what we do. We do a lot right. of other things, yeah, but yeah. it's, it's like, it's the hook that people just love because it works and it's so simple and fast. People like what works and they like what's fast and simple. It's like, wow, it's, it's, it checks every <laughs> box. Okay. So the point is that my affirmations method is a specific form of a question. All right. Mm -hmm. Notice the word form is right in the word form yeah. already. Right. And so when you form a question in your brain, by virtue of the embedded presupposition factor, your brain has to start to search for the answer. So to go to your question, all right, so an example being an entrepreneur who wants to get more clients, right? Now, that you know, we've helped doctors, chiropractors, dentists, uh, network marketers, affiliate marketers, coaches, consultants, course creators, I mean, you know, dozens and dozens of industries over the last 20 plus years to add six, seven, and even eight figures to their businesses, all right? So this is, you know, one simple example, all right? So let's take the old affirmations method, right? So that old way. All right, so the old way that the gurus would teach you would be to say, like, um, I'm getting more clients. And your brain goes, no, you're not. <laughs> you know, it's like, who are you trying to kid, buddy? Right. And so what they're teaching is basically what they're saying. If you really break it down is bash your brain into submission. Right. Say these things that you don't believe. And all you have to do is repeat it a thousand billion, million, billion, gajillion times, and then you'll believe it someday. Now, for about 25% of the population, that works just fine. What about the rest of us? Right? So that's where my affirmations method comes in. It's like, how about the rest of us? Yeah. So the point is, every human being right now is forming questions in our brains. All 8 billion of us on this planet are already doing this. But here's the problem. There's actually two problems. Number one is, most people don't know they're doing this. Right? Most people haven't learned about affirmations yet. OK, even though I've been teaching this for over 20 plus years, you know, most human beings have still not heard of this method. 
Okay. And so they're still trying to do the old way. But here's the second problem is that most people are unknowingly, unconsciously, unwittingly asking lousy questions, right? Like the examples I gave before. So an example mm -hmm. in this sense or in this case might be, why is it so hard for me to get new clients? See, so the entrepreneur is unknowingly asking a disempowering question. Mm -hmm. Why is it so hard for me to get clients, right? Now, it's obvious that no one would do this on purpose, right? No right. one would consciously, but that's the very point. When mm -hmm. I discovered affirmations over 25 years ago, I literally, well, one of the things that I did was I sat there and I wrote down all the disempowering questions I'd been asking myself mm -hmm. without knowing it. Why am I so stupid? Why can't I do anything right? Why does nothing ever work out for me? And blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh my God, that's my life. I didn't know I was doing this. See, this is why, as you mentioned, you know, the mind blown and these little mm -hmm. light bulbs going on over here. Yeah. like, oh my God, I didn't know I was doing this. No kidding. Nobody told you, right? That's why, you know, I had to discover this in the shower 25 years ago, right? But my point is that now that you, you see that and you go, oh my God, I didn't know I was holding myself back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Which goes to my point of head trash, which is another thing that I've written a bunch of books about. But anyway, so if we were to flip that around and very simply ask an empowering rather than a disempowered question, why is it so easy for me to get new clients? Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. So I, uh, you know, I have different programs. We have online courses, programs. We have group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching. One of my group coaching programs is called the 12-week breakthrough. And that's where we, as you mentioned earlier, I, I'm known for helping uh, my clients make more in just 12 weeks than they made in the previous 12 months while winning their lives back. So one woman, uh, she's a 68-year-old entrepreneur in Arizona, right? And so her name's Tamisa. Great, awesome. She's got a great personality, really warm and bubbly and just awesome. But she had spent lots of time, money, and effort on all those gurus out there. And, you know, her, her business had plateaued. It was She was doing okay, but she just kept hitting... I call it the income ceiling, right? She just right. kept hitting that ceiling no matter what she tried. And so I, uh, she joined my 12-week breakthrough program. And, you know, I taught her my affirmations method and the other things that we do too. As I mentioned, you know, affirmations isn't all we do, but it's, you know, the, the starting point for, for everything that we do because your beliefs form everything, okay? Anyway, so she was like, oh my gosh, Noah, I didn't know that I've been asking myself all these disempowering questions. You know, and it was keeping me held back. Bottom line, in the first two weeks of us working together, she tripled her investment in the program, meaning mm -hmm. she was she started to see this hockey stick growth, as we like to call it. You know, she's going along like this and then whoop, hockey stick. So the point is, in just two weeks, she tripled her investment. We hadn't even started talking about money yet. <laughs> OK, so that's one simple example of how powerful this really is. Oh, cool. Well, now I think this is probably related because you're talking about, you know, these disempowering questions. So right. is that really then what you're talking about when you talk about head trash? Because you said that that's, I guess, that's the number one reason so many people feel stuck. So can you define that for me? And and how yeah. does it really keep people stuck? Absolutely. All right. So for everyone watching the program and listening, I want you to think about your goals for the next 12 months, right? Everybody talks about goals, right? Set your goals and think positive and you can do it and blah, 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 right? We see this all over the place, right? <laughs> um, okay, so, but they have it sort of almost right, all right? I mean, well, not really, but anyway, there's, there's a little piece in there that's that's right. So it is important to think about what you want, right? So right. let's just say, you know, and people say to me, well, no, I want to grow my business. I want to start a business. I want to start a side hustle. I want to, you know, write a book or, you know, write books like you do. I want to have online courses like you've got, mm -hmm. you know, whatever your goals are. And by the way, it's not just about money or business. It can be in your personal life. I want sure. to find love. I want to, you know, have a happier marriage. I want to lose weight. I want to be healthier, whatever it is. So again, mm -hmm. we're not just talking about money, right? but you know, whatever it is. All right. So think about that goal for the next 12 months. All right. Now what happens is for most people, for most people, the very next thought is, ah, I probably can't do it. <laughs> you know, so you think of the thing, and this is what the gurus never tell you. The gurus never tell you this because they just say, well, there you go. I'm like, okay, no kidding. So here's that thing that I want. And then the next side is, ah, I probably can't do it. Now, that right there is, in fact, the thing 
that's keeping you stuck. And so the way that I teach head trash and, you know, the way that I help people get rid of their head trash, take out their head trash, right? One of the first steps we look at is what are you saying to yourself? So I want that thing, but I probably can't do it. Okay. So your head trash is the voice in your head that says, I can't do it because mm. dot, dot, dot. See, nobody just says, I can't do it. They say, I can't do it because. Now, whatever happens after the word because is what you believe and what you will defend to the death. Okay. So as an example, well, Noah, I want to grow my business, but I don't have the time. Right. Well, Noah, I want to get coaching, but I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. I want to lose weight, but I'm too old. And I mean, whatever you just said is what you believe and right. what you will defend to the death. See, we mm -hmm. humans have an infinite capacity to make ourselves right, <laughs> That's which true. is fascinating isn't yes. it because it's like yeah i told you i couldn't do it i didn't do it see i told you i'm like well great you get to be right yeah yeah self wait a minute prophecy. yeah exactly this is one area where you don't want to be right <laughs> it's like wait a minute why am i making and i i often ask my clients my audience members i say would you rather be right or would you rather be rich mm -hmm. hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing um i <laughs> So many things are going through my head at the moment, and, and I'm <laughs> yeah, trying to think. It opens up a lot, doesn't it? I know it does. Well, yeah. you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you something because because mm -hmm. I've done this sometimes with people. So I know love what you're saying. I think it's it's awesome. How could someone that wants to execute this, what you're saying, get it wrong? How could they get it wrong? Yeah, by keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Okay. I you know Ben Franklin said famously that there are only two guarantees in life, death and taxes. Now, with all due respect to old Ben, I would argue there is actually a third guarantee in life. And that is, if you keep doing what you're doing, I guarantee you'll keep getting the same result, right? We've all heard the definition of insanity, yep. doing the same thing, expecting a different result. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, for example, our 12-week our breakthrough is so effective because we're working on inner game and outer game. All right. Now, what I mean by that is inner game is everything that happens between your ears that you can't see directly, but it's affecting everything that you do. For example, your head trash, right? Like Tamisa, mm -hmm. who I just told you about, right. she didn't know that she was doing this. She, You meet her. She's very positive. You know, she's all she's got a great bubbly personality. But inside, she didn't wasn't aware of this consciously of all this head trash, all these negative self-limiting beliefs. She didn't know. And she was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even know I was doing this. I'm like, no kidding. That's why I called it in the subconscious. <laughs> right. And then, like, you know, as I mentioned, you know, she tripled her investment. And then and we haven't gotten to the money part yet. The money part is, is the outer game. That's where we look at, you know, mm -hmm. as, especially for, you know, you online entrepreneurs, people who either have or want to start or grow their online business. Right. And we have to look at those things. You have to look at your offers, your funnels and your traffic. Because. You know, it's amazing because I've helped people add six, seven and eight figures for over 20 years now to their business while working less. And for a long time, I taught that all you need to do is fix your inner game. And the reason I taught that is because that's what I saw over and over and over again. It's like, I mean, people going from four million to 20 million, mm -hmm. uh, people going from 5,000 a month to 75,000 a month. I mean, just this hockey stick growth, just incredible. And a hundred percent of that was in her game. Yep. But I realized over time, like if I said that people, some people took it the wrong way. They misunderstood, mm -hmm. they misconstrued it. And they say, well, I don't even have to work on my, you know, mm -hmm. online business. I'm like, well, no, you really have to do that too. Yeah, that's true. So it's, you it's gotta do, but it's, it's kind of very much like the iceberg, right? Like 5% mm -hmm. is what you see, meaning outer game, right? right. Meaning while well, the 95% of the iceberg, your mm -hmm. inner game. I mean, that's what causes the hockey stick. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and I've I've seen that just even with my own experience as a business owner, but right. also with my clients, is that it really is you can have all the best tools and the best strategies and everything and the best looking website. It's got great messaging, but still, if you are doing those sabotaging beliefs and questions, right. that you're still not going to be successful like That's right. as you want to be. And so. it's always in the subconscious. Mm. You're not consciously nobody wakes up in the morning and says, Wow, this looks like a great day. You know what? I think I'm going to hold myself back from success today. Right. Yeah. No, you know, that's great. <laughs> Nobody would ever say that. That's a conscious thought. 
Yeah. Right. So we are holding ourselves back because of these subconscious self-limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when you go to our website, you just see just hundreds of examples of this. And people right. literally say, you know, Noah was the first coach I ever worked with that actually, instead of just doing all this outer game stuff, we worked on the inner game and that's, you know, what caused my hockey yeah. to grow. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, we're, we're talking about being able to, to change our way of thinking. And I know part of this, I think sometimes, sometimes maybe we are, there may be times when we are consciously aware of mm -hmm. when we do have these negative thoughts. And so right. I know one of the things you talk about is, you know, when you want to be able to change a habit, a lot of times people will talk about, well, you just need to have a lot of willpower to do it. But you say that's actually the worst thing to do. So why, why do you say that? Yeah, that, that is another thing the gurus love to say. Well, just grit your teeth and rah, noise the grindstone, rah, 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 hustle and grind. Rah. You know, it's like, oh, my God, where did these people grow up? You know, it's just nuts. Anyway, um, so, again, there's a kernel of truth in there, a grain of truth. But let, let me give you an example. All right, so imagine you're in your kitchen. Everybody listening to the program. All right, so imagine you're in your kitchen right now, right? And somebody comes into the kitchen, and they have a freshly baked plate of chocolate chip cookies. And you see the chocolate chip cookies and you can see the, the steam rising up and you can smell the cookies and you're like, your mouth starts watering. You're like, oh my gosh, that really works. It smells great, right? And then they say to you, okay, now listen, I have to leave. So I'm gonna put these cookies here. Now don't eat a cookie. Whatever you do, do not eat a chocolate chip cookie, all right? I have to go, now don't eat a cookie. And they leave the room. Now, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go, <laughs> rah, 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 rah. are you gonna eat those cookies, right? I mean, come on. Yeah. That's what willpower is like, right? Yeah. It, it's like basically saying, don't do that thing you want to do, right? right? And we humans don't like that, right? We don't like to deprive ourselves of anything. So by the way, this is one of the main reasons why diets don't work. Because mm -hmm. a, a typical, you know, traditional old school diet is basically you saying to you, don't do that. Don't do that. And you're like, I want it, right? <laughs> you're eating at 3 a.m., yeah. right? It's crazy. I mean, it's a, it's a cliche because it's true, right? And so that's why what, what we do with our clients and one of the reasons we're able to get that hockey stick growth is we work on what a habit really is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just very briefly, a habit is five stages. So it's the cue, the routine, the reward, the craving, and the belief. All right. So basically the cue is the trigger that happens in your environment. Mm -hmm. The routine is what you do as a result of the trigger. Then you have a reward that happens in the brain and you have a craving that actually causes you to keep doing that habit. And then the final stage of a habit is actually a belief. And you actually develop a belief about that particular habit. Now, let me give you a classic example, which is procrastination. Now, procrastination is the number one habit by a million miles that my clients tell me they'd like to break or change, right? If I say, mm -hmm. hey, you know, what is the habit that you think is holding yourself back right now? You know, eight out of 10 people say procrastination mm -hmm. or also lack of focus. Those two go really hand in hand. Yeah. So what is procrastination? Procrastination is you knowing you need to do something and instead you go do something else, right? I really need to work on my website. I think I'll go watch Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, wait, exactly. what? You know, but when, and so the point is the gurus would say, well, come on, just work on that website or do that. You know, like, and you're like, Ugh. I mean, maybe you can, again, it, it's not that it doesn't work. It just barely works, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like affirmations. You know, it's not that they don't work. It's just that they barely work, right? So why not use a better tool? Right. That's what I've invented. Better tools. Right. To, well, to change your life, change your habits, change your results, change your life. Right. And so anyway, so what we do is we first of all, we uh, identify the cue. What's the cue that happens to trigger in your life? Oh, I think about doing that project. Right. The very next thing is the routine. Well, I get scared, you know, and I'm like, oh, what if it doesn't work? What if I fail? What if it works? What if I succeed? Right. Fear of failure, fear of success at the same time. That's crazy. Have you met humans? Hello. We're nuts. Anyway, I'm not, I'm kidding, but I mean, not really. We're, we, yeah. Anyway, so we got the cue, the routine, the reward, right? The, what's the reward? That doesn't make any sense. No, I'm not talking about a reward like money. I'm talking about a reward in your brain. The human brain is designed to keep you not dead. That's the basic design of the brain. Make sure you're not dead, right? So what's a great way to make sure you're not dead? Don't go after something that scares you, right? If it's something that scares you, it might be a lion or a tiger or, you know, a saber-toothed tiger or a you know, uh, say, uh, what do you call it? Mastodon in there in the bushes yeah. and it's going to eat you or stomp on you and you're dead. Okay. Of course, there's no saber tooth tigers around here, but you know, we're talking about the ancient human brain here that's exactly. been around for how many hundreds of thousands of years. Right. And so that's the point is we, we have this fear. So we say, Ooh, fear, go away, go watch Netflix. <laughs> okay. So you kind of, it, it actually really does make sense when you, when you, when you dig down right deep yeah. enough. 
And then what? So then you have the QRT and the reward. Then you have a craving, a craving for what? A craving for safety. We humans crave safety. Mm -hmm. And your brain's literally going, hey, you're not dead. You're welcome. I did my <laughs> job today. Yeah. That's why that's why procrastination actually feels good. Because you're like, oh, I'm not dead. Oh, this is great. Yeah. And what's funny is this brain, I'm pointing to the back of my head here, the ancient brain, not the front, mm -hmm. you know, the frontal cortex is the thing that says, hey, dude, you got to do this. Come on, man. <laughs> Get to work. Nah, I think I'll just be not dead. Okay. So instead of fighting it, which is what willpower is, it's you fighting you, which again, mm -hmm. can work a little, but not really. We just say, listen, here's all you need to do. You get the same, you have the same trigger, the same cue. Oh man, I got to do that thing. All you do is change your routine. What if we just worked on it for five minutes? Just five minutes. And then, okay, how about 10 minutes? All right, I can I can do 10 minutes. Anybody can do 10 minutes. All right, I'll do it. All right. And then what happens is you finally do the thing. You're like, wait a minute. Oh, my gosh. 90 minutes just went by. I didn't even know. I've, I've done that. Right. <laughs> I've exactly. absolutely done that right. before. Yep. I'm sure we've all done that. And that's the thing. It's like just uh, I've always said that the hardest part of any exercise program it's is getting up off, off the couch. Yeah, yeah. It's not the thing, the thing, the thing, the thing. It's you getting up off of the couch and doing mm -hmm. it. Yeah. You know, and same thing, you know, oh, I got to write that report or I got to do my website, whatever. It's just starting the stupid thing. All right. So just just do it for five minutes. And there's no lions. There's there's no tigers. There's no bears. You're not going to die. And you and, and they really and people go, oh, my gosh, I, I honestly felt like I was going to die. I'm like, I know because your brain's telling you it. Your brain mm -hmm. is. Sometimes a liar. Let's yes, just say. that's true. <laughs> okay, and then and then by the way, and of course, the beauty of this is, and this is you know one of the ways it all ties together. Then we use affirmations to change your belief. Right. Why can't you know? Why can't I ever get that, anything done on time? That's a negative affirmation. Mm -hmm. You affirmed it. It became firm. There's your life. Why am I so good at getting done what I need to get done each day? Mm -hmm. Wow, I affirmed it. That could be my new life. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Ah, oh, this is wonderful. You give me so many good things. So I'm I'm gonna I want to ask one other question that I'd love to ask our guests. So because especially because you're you're really involved with the mind and, and mm -hmm. helping people out with that. What are you curious about right now? Oh, that's a great question. Let's see. What am I curious about? Um, I guess where I'm gonna go next. I, I, that might sound self-serving, but. I, I am. I, I, it's been an amazing journey up until now, you know, 25 years. Um, you know, I, I'm very, I know I'm very blessed that I get to work from, you know, my home, my home office. You see it behind me here. Uh, you know, I have a, I started with a three, in, I started 25 years ago in 1997 in a 300 square foot basement apartment with $800 to my name and a book on HTML. Now I live in a three, uh, a 6,000 square foot mansion on a hill. I get to work from home. My, my beautiful wife and I, you know, we're business partners and I mean, we've built an incredible life together. So I guess what I'm curious about is, you know, what we're going to do next because it's been an amazing journey. Mm, well, that's wonderful. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> you you are certainly practicing what you preach, which is important because that's also sometimes what happens with a lot of these so-called gurus is right. that they talk a good game, but they don't necessarily yeah. um, follow through on what they're actually Correct talking Indeed. about. So I'm glad to see that you do. You. Um, you, you've you got one thing. I'm, I'm going to ask you one other thing after mm -hmm. this, but I know that you've got uh, a way for people to uh, be able to get a copy of your book. Yep. So I'm going to. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this is one of my books. Uh, it's called Get Rid of Your Head Trash About Money, How to Avoid the Three Big Money Mistakes Even Smart People Make. And you see there on the screen, you can get the book for free. It's sendmeabooknoah.com. Easy to remember. Sendmeabooknoah.com. And I will send you a book. So the book is free. We just ask you to cover the shipping. So it's the book is free at sendmeabooknoah.com. Excellent. Excellent. I love that domain. Very good. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Um, I know what I was going to ask you. One last thing is... Yeah. Is there anything else that I should have asked you about that ah. I didn't that you would like to? Oh man, know? we we could go on and on, but I all mean, right. Well, um, one last thing. One last thing. Geez, uh, no, actually, um, I'll just I I just actually released something that I think your listeners would really love, and it's called the Seven Figure Scorecard. Mm. Um, and so you can actually get because you know my new 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 book is called the Seven Figure Life, and so I created a scorecard to see how you are doing on your journey to making that seven or even eight figures, if you like. Um, mm -hmm. So that's at sevenfigurequiz.com. It's a free quiz. 
and you can get your seven figure scorecard. So basically you just answer some questions and it's, it's basically like taking one of those online quizzes, uh, you know, which friend are you, or, you know, which sex in the city character are you, whatever it's, it's just a fun, uh, but it's, but in this case, it'll actually help you on your journey, you know, to that seven or eight figures. So that's, again, it's free. It's a uh, seven figure quiz. Dot com. Okay. And is that the number seven or is it spelled out? Either way, actually, it'll work oh, both ways, but mostly good. the number seven. <laughs> okay. Well, I will be sure and have that in the show notes. So if you were yes. listening somewhere and you don't have a pen handy, yeah. just go to live, love, engage podcast.com, find this episode, and then you'll be able to get that information. So, um, yeah, this has been wonderful and the time has flown by and and yet we covered a lot of stuff. So, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> so I can see why you're you're a keynote speaker. You, you oh, know how to you. how to be able to get your point across in a succinct manner. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and actually, well, you have it on the screen there. But where is like your website if people want to find out more about maybe coaching? Yeah. Uh, if you want to let people know about that who aren't watching. Yes, yes. Our, so our main website is just my name, noahstjohn.com, N-O-A-H-S-T-J-O-H-N, just like it sounds, noahstjohn.com. And there's, you know, lots of free resources, my books, my online courses, you know, our one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching. But yeah, all of that is at our, our main hub, which is uh, noahstjohn.com. All right. Excellent. All right. Well, and again, I'll have that in the show notes as well for everyone. So thank you so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure.